Hi there, I'm Yvette. And I'm Peter. And, and this, this is, is our bus, Abbey. Abbey. We've named our bus after Abbey owner, the Roman goddess of outbound travel. We're hoping for all the good omens we can get, because the plan is to convert Abbey into a motorhome. We're complete newbies at this, and we're kind of hoping that these videos will act as a guide for someone else who's doing a similar thing, and someone might be able to pick up some tips on what to do, or more likely, uh, what not to do. This time around, we're going to tackle the rear windows and the rust repairs that we need to do on them, and we'll also um, give you a rundown of what we got after we finished our ceiling insulation removal. So um, I'm just getting this window, pop, trying to pop this back window out because of the rust down here, and we're going to fix that up. But I just started in the top corner, and I don't know if anyone else has had the same trouble with getting these windows out, but I'm not a glazier, but um, so I've just popped that the the very top corner on this side. That where it's what quite difficult to do. I've just popped that, try, that's what I've started, and popped that under and out, and got it on the other side of the, the steel lip. And then I'm just going down, down the edge gradually, just pushing the lip back under the metal flat, just with a plastic um, scraper on the back of it. Um, and I'm hoping to go all the way around like this, and eventually um, pop it out while holding it on the outside of my hand. Um, so. The, I think the difficult thing, the most difficult thing, has obviously been to get the first part started, which was just the corner. And so you just have to get that first corner pushed out, um, and then just sort of, I think, go all the way around and pop it all the way out. But um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we got the, the window out, it wasn't too bad. Once we got the first bit started, it came out pretty good. Um, this is our problem, is the rust here. It's not too bad at the top, all the way around, but from about uh, you know, about a hundred mil up, all the way down, and this is our main main rough spot, which I'm going to have to fix up. It's also a little bit bubbly on the outside, um, but that's our main problem. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any holes in it, so it might not be too bad, but we'll see once we get the wire brush on, it might, might make some holes. Um, over this side, we can pop this window out as well, just in case, because I thought it was looking a bit dodge. And there is a little bit of rust there, but not nearly as bad as the other side. Just here, and a little bit bubbly on the outside as well. Um, so we'll fix that up while we're there. And um, while, um, well the next thing is I'm gonna take these lights out as well, because we know that both of these lights leak as well. Uh, it's leaking around the seal, so I'm gonna take all these bolts out and pop it out and do something with the seal. I'll probably put some new rubber in um, on this side and on the the yeah, passenger side as well. The passenger side, I think, is worse um, from what we could tell when it was raining the other day. And um, there's quite a bit of water in here, um, sort of pulled up quite a bit. So um, yeah, we'll pop both of these out, clean them all up, um, put some new rubber in, and um, maybe even a bit of that um, the black sealant, uh, possibly, uh, just to sort of make sure we're not going to have any more leaks. But um, yeah, hopefully. Once we've done all these things, we shouldn't have too many other problems with the bus because the rest of it is pretty solid. The rust um, is really nowhere else we can see. So um, once we're done here, we're hoping that um, that will be just about us for the rust fixing. So onwards and upwards. Okay, so maybe a few days since I've even looked at these windows. Um, but yeah, I've done all the prep work on the fixing of the holes and now it's been undercoated so there was holes along this edge and just sort of roughly filled it with a like a fiberglass type builder's bog or auto bog and then sanded it back and then used some finer filler as well to um, just finish off and just give it a bit of light sand so it's not so um, rough None of this is probably going to be really seen, so it's not like it has to be super pretty. But the rust is gone. Um, this has all been rebuilt to about the right so uh, size for the seal when we put the window back in. And I've sort of resprayed it. And then the other side, this was the main area of concern, this side. Um, there was some bigger holes here. Um, and quite quite a bit of rust in and around here, but um, so pretty happy with how it's looking at the moment. 
so this is how it looks from the outside. Um, excuse the mess here, there's a bit of overspray and a bit of dust and whatnot, but um, yeah, today I'm gonna just um, have a bit of a sand, a light sand with some wet and dry sandpaper just to sort of um, feather that in a bit better. I've actually ordered some tins of uh, aerosol top coat uh, that's been colour matched to this greeny grey colour and I'm due to pick those up tomorrow morning so I'm figuring at some stage this week I'll uh, be able to do a top coat or two but today I'm just going to get this so it is ready for the top coat when uh, I get the cans so yeah this is the driver's side and it's pretty much the same thing where I've done the, all of the undercoats done um, and I'm just going to give it a quick sand back today with wet and dry and we'll be ready to go when you get the top coat. And I might have to just clean up some of these areas where I've oversprayed. And hopefully I can get that off with some cut and polish or something, I think, maybe. And ho well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, have a crack at that so it's not a big surprise for us later on. This is the window now um, I've repaired all the rust that was happening. This is the driver's side one, which wasn't actually that bad to begin with. Um, so Bogged it up and did a bunch of undercoats and things like that. It's not perfect, it's not sort of like a spray painter's finish or anything like that, or a panel beater's. Um, and I've got some colour match paint made, but it's not a great match, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I don't really know why. It, I got it matched up from the petrol cap and uh, mixed three aerosol cans, but it's, you know, as you can see there, it's clearly not the same colour greeny blue, um, which is a bit disappointing. I won't show you on the outside now because it's nearly dark, but. Um, of course I've done the same painting on the outside yeah I've got to the same point where it's all this top coat and I've done a clear coat as well but it's not the same colour um, so I'm going to have to probably uh, go over it again and do the whole corner panel on the outside I'd only masked off certain areas of it around the window and so the paint match is pretty clear that you can't that it doesn't match and I'm going to have to uh, give that a bit of a sand back, I think the top coat again, and remask everything so that it covers the entire corner panel on the outside um, and we'll re repaint it the, with the top coats anyway. I'm not too bothered about the inside here. Um, the colour match is not really a biggie uh, for the inside because we're going to cover most of this stuff probably in, in like some sort of boxing, like MDF or ply or something rather. So a lot of this won't be seen anyway, um, and we're pretty happy just to leave it as is. The past few weeks I've been chipping away at the repairs around the, the back windows where we had the rust. Uh, I've done most of the actual repairs, like the refilling and the priming and all the rust repairs. Um, so I've got to the point where I'm doing the top coat now. Um, I did have a crack at it the other day and it didn't really work out that well because the colour match is not perfect which I think I pointed out in a previous video so I've decided today I'm going to redo both corners and do it the whole panel so the match works better I'm not going to get new paint I'm just going to redo both corners in their entirety so that there's no sort of uh, dodgy line that where, the, where the paint has to match up so um, I've done the first coat, I just did it now, and I'm hoping to do all three base coats and then the clear gloss coats today uh, so that we don't have the problem we had with the other day where leaving it a day sort of made the finish worse <laughs> uh, when I came to do the clear gloss coats. So if I can get all of the coats done today, um, hopefully this will make it look a bit better when we've got the finished product and also... <laughs> The weather's not the best, it's a bit chilly of course, it's winter and, and a bit rainy, although today itself is not so bad at the moment, but it is expected to rain later, so hopefully if I can get these coats all done and dusted well before it's getting dark and cold late, late today, um, then hopefully it should settle down and dry well and, and be good for polishing and, and cutting back another day. But if I can get all the painting done today, I'd be pretty stoked.
So we had these windows out for a little while now. The, um, the seal and everything like that has been redone. I've put the window back into the seal. The tint has been redone, which is a bit of a pain, but I did that while it was out. It was easier to do it out than in. Um, so now we're just looking to string or rope these windows back in. We've just done the first one, so that went okay. And so now we're going to video the second one uh, because we weren't sure how long the first one was going to take. But anyway, so the, the technique for the first one was essentially just put the start at the bottom, have an overlap there where the string's got to come around and meet, and just sort of work it into the pinch weld, of, or in, into where the pinch weld goes on the rubber seal. Just all the way around and, and nice and right in the crease. Push it in all the way around. This, this cord is just uh, something from Bunnings, it was just, like, it's, I think it's like a 4mm cord, I think it is, just like a clothesline, um, just just a yeah, prop, like a string cord, not, not like a wire or anything, so, um, and then at the bottom it just overlaps like that, and that's where we're going to start when we put it into the, into the opening, we're going we're gonna to paste it in at the bottom, and then push down and work our way around, but first I'm going to chuck some black uh, RTV windscreen sealant around this outside edge, the one that's going to push up against the outside body of the bus, uh, just as a little bit extra because because these windows have been a bit of a problem obviously with rust and, and um, water getting in, and we want to try and make sure that we don't have to do this again. So uh, figure uh, we've got overkill on the sealant and make sure that it makes a good seal all the way around. So Yvette's just wiping the gunk off the outside, but we've got this one in, so the pinch weld thing is all, all in, it popped in of course the top corners up here, by far the trickiest once you get up around that corner, it's just a bit hard to pull them out, but um, it works with the string, it's, it's better than trying to do it without I think, um, and so we've got it all popped in. If it's just using the turps to give it a quick wipe down outside. Um, inside's not too bad, but of course the sealant is more on the outside edge. But uh, yeah, we're going to give those a clean up and um, we should be sort of sealed back up again, uh, aside from the floor of course, but um, yeah, the windows anyway. And um, we'll give all these a decent wipe down and get all the marks off and uh, move on from there. Hey guys! So it's Sunday morning here, my job for today is getting the um, little bit of um, insulation off the wheel arches. So here's the wheel arches and you can see it's covered in this. So what we're thinking is we get all this off and then we're going to put something on there to um, stop the noise coming up from um, underneath the buzz as we're driving and that sort of stuff. It's a similar process as what I use for taking the um, the glue and the insulation off the ceiling there is we're going to spray it with a bit of engine degreaser or I'm going to spray it with some engine degreaser then just use a plastic scraper um, the reason being plastic scraper because I don't want to scratch into the metal at all so that could lead to um, a bit of surface rust getting in there later on um, so just using the plastic scraper get that all up and then we're going to get some sort of um, foil insulation type stuff to um, put back on there just to help us out later on Okay folks, so here we are back in the bus, just having a quick look at the final outcome of the 
work that Yvette and Liam put in to remove the rest of the insulation from the ceiling. So this is our final result for all of the removal of the insulation from the ceiling. As you can see it's pretty clean. There's a couple of spots here and there where it's just a little bit of glue left. We're just going to leave that. Um, we're not too bothered about you know, going and doing another layer of spray to get it off. So we're going to go with that. There's a couple of rust spots that we found that were further up here and I've coated those in they've been coated in rust remover up here and it's gone all black so that was just sort of some surface rust uh, but that's the only real spots that we could find on the roof after taking all of the adhesive and the insul insulation off at least we did find that because otherwise if we'd left it on there it might have um, gone unseen uh, so at the moment to keep the damp out a bit um, we've just put a dehumidifier into the bus just overnight and because there was a night a couple of days ago where it rained a lot a lot of humidity in the bus like the next morning there were drips everywhere coming off of the ceiling so um, yeah it was just a, a bit of a awakening as to how much moisture can form in here when you've got um, some openings like we've got the back windows still open at the moment with the um, with the rust repairs that are going on there. That first night I mopped it all off with a towel and went straight out and got a dehumidifier to plonk in the bus um, for when we have days like that and evenings like that. It fills up a two litre tank of water overnight so that, that's how much moisture is going to end up in the bus if we didn't do that so uh, that's a good investment I think. Um, yeah but that'll only be here temporarily until we get the everything buttoned up properly. Um, and I don't know if we showed you before but this is um, after I removed the final covering of the air conditioning unit at the front above the cab. So um, we're going to box all this in again at some point. Sort of make it so that we've maybe got a few vents just going down to the cab. Like we might, we'd uh, actually kept a couple of the little uh, circular vents that you take out of the, the main cabin. Like it, we'll probably make an MDF cabinet above here. And we'll just use a couple of those little round vents to um, direct the air conditioning into the cab area um, but we'll only have it in that area we're not going to bother running it all the way to the back because it'll only really be for um, when we're on the road and for the cab area 